Hello and welcome to Allie doesn't know anything about history, but she's learning it as we go and telling you all about it with Miss Allie and Anderson and Lucy and Lucy and there's Lincoln back there, but he doesn't want to join. <clears throat> so let's start with the origins. How did Rome get founded? You might remember something from our timeline song. Andy, how does it go? Romulus and Remus. Good job. Rome was founded by these mythological brothers called Romulus and Remus. And they, Andy, where did they come from? They came from somewhere over here. Mm -hmm. And then they, their mm -hmm. aunt made them, um, like, throw them into a basket and down the river. And then they... Um, Got raised by wolves. Yeah. Weird story. It's just a myth. Probably not true, but that's what the Romans... And then Romulus killed... Um, Remus. His... Yes. And so that's why Rome is called Romulus. Again, myth probably didn't happen, but that is the origin story of Rome. So Rome starts out as this teeny tiny village uh, founded by Romulus. So legend has it... That 754 BC, Rome is founded and it's a village. So, on your first map, if you want to, you can draw a little dot around Rome in one color, and then over here, you can kind of do your key and write down that Rome was a village in 754 BC. Now, as Rome grew and grew and grew, eventually it and became grew. and grew. It eventually became a city. So we'll do city in blue. We don't have an exact you know date for when that happened, but as it grew into a city, it started to become a monarchy. And so the monarchy mm -hmm. is a term that is used when a area is ruled by kings. So. It transitioned from a city to a whole territory, and it was ruled by, I think it's six kings. And so after each king died or was killed, a new king rose up and ruled the area. Eventually, the last king died, and Rome became what's called the Roman Republic. And so I'll do the Roman Republic uh, in orange. So here's kind of a picture of the Roman Republic. And let me put this here. Um, you can consider the Roman Republic as happening between 510 BC and about 264 BC. So Republic means that instead of a king governing everything, Rome had a group of people that would make rules that are in the best interest of the people. And by the way, the last king, I think, was, um, I forgot the name. Okay. Um, so, they formed, Rome formed a senate. And a senate was a group of people um, that were well off. They were wealthy and they had a lot of land and they had a lot of slaves. And they made the decisions for the Republic. And so Rome actually transitioned to a Republic and had kind of three categories of people. The first were called the Patricians. And the Patricians were the... Had lots of money. Yes, they had tons of money. And they were kind of like the fancy people. They're the politicians. They were people with the bigger houses and the territories. And so the patricians, uh, or I should say the Senate, was formed only of patricians. And then underneath that, we had the plebeians. And plebeians are the ordinary working people. Um, they were poor. They did not have their own land. They worked for the pr pr patricians. Um, they were the metalsmiths and the bakers and the farmers. Then on the last rung, slaves. You have slaves. And these people owned nothing and were owned by, they didn't own anything, but they were owned by the patricians. So patricians rule everything. Interesting thing about the Republic. The Republic had consuls. Consuls were the leaders over the Senate 
and there were two consoles. Basically, they were kind of like side-by-side -side presidents. Two presidents, if you will, that ruled next to each other in the Senate. Uh, the consuls, you know, told the Senate what they wanted, and the Senate also told the consuls what they were and weren't allowed to do. And so they kind of worked together, kind of similar to our... Um, kind of like friends. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know that they were really friends. A lot of them didn't like each other. Kind of. Yeah. There was a third group of people that also had power called the generals. And when Roman became a republic in 510 BC, they decided they were going to start to conquer all of Italy. And as they went and fought these wars, the generals would have temporary power. And so when they were in the middle of a war, the general had power and the consuls stepped down. So they weren't making decisions anymore. It was the generals making decisions. Yep. And then when the war was over, the general would step down and allow the consuls mm -hmm. to keep ruling. Yep. So we have a period of the Roman Republic where they are conquering land. And the crazy part is, after they conquered land, they gave land to the soldiers. The land they conquered, they gave to the soldiers. But all the soldiers wanted land, right? So they kept mm -hmm. having to conquer more and more and more land in order to have enough land to give the soldiers. It was kind of this crazy cycle. So, eventually, Rome conquered this area called Sicily. It's right at the end of the boot of Italy. And kicking, wait, the Italy oh, is Oh, Carthage kicking. is actually right way down here. You can't even see it on the map, but Carthage is down here. So, remember how Carthage is kicked by Italy's boot? Well, actually, Rome... I think this is the boot and not that. Yeah, this is the boot. But, um, Rome conquered Sicily. Sicily, and they were friends with the Italians, which were in this general area as well. And so the Rome, so <clears throat> we have Rome right here, Carthage. Da, 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 da. Remember Carthage being kicked by Italy's boot? Here's Carthage. I'm going to change it to green. Carthage is um, actually. Let's go to your next. Let's go to your next map, the one that says Punic Wars. So. Go ahead and circle Carthage, and if you want to, you can take um, like a green marker or something. Or this map. <laughs> and kind of color these areas um, where Carthage is. Carthage was located in here, but remember we also have the Italians there. Let's do the Italians maybe in blue. So Italians are here too, yep. and then we know that Rome joined in with them here. So we got a lot of people that are not happy with each other here. Turns out that Carthage was attacking Italy, Italy was attacking Carthage, and Rome was friends with Italy. So guess what you think Rome did? Conquer Carthage. Yeah, they decided to join the fight too. So they start fighting over this area. And we get to what's called the Punic Wars. Punic Wars. Da, 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 da. Punic Wars. Punic and the Punic Wars are between 264 BC and 241 BC. Wow, that's, that oh, lasted. actually, that's the first Punic War. The second Punic War actually goes until 202 BC. So we're talking 60 years oh. of war. Can you imagine 60 years of war? That's yeah. a lot of war. And Let's move to our next, um, our next picture which is going to kind of show us how the battles fought over time. And if you you're want to draw this on your map, map, you can, or you can just follow along with us. Yep. So. Mommy, you went to a different map. I know. It's, well, we're, on, we're still on the Punic Wars map. <clears throat> so, uh, Rome in red, Carthage in blue, Syracuse is the space that Italy had. So Rome and Italy um, fight Carthage. And they decide, we're going to defend Sicily. And they built a fleet. Rome did not have a, a fleet, like a fleet, like ships in the water. So they built a bunch of ships. And they started fighting the Carthaginians, right, which are found Carthage. in Carthage. So 
They start fighting the Carthaginians, but it's kind of a stalemate. No one's really winning. They just keep fighting and keep fighting and keep fighting. So Carthage has this great idea. And they said, oh, wait, hold on. That was the first Punic War. It ended up in a stalemate, okay? Carthage, Rome, no one's really winning. So they basically just stop fighting. Then Carthage starts another war called the Second Punic Wars. And Carthage uh, was really smart. And they were like, hey, what if we distract Rome and we go doop 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 and let's attack Rome from the north and they won't even see it coming. So in 218 BC, we see the Second Punic War. It goes 218 to 202 BC. And there's a general and his name is Hannibal. Hannibal? Hannibal, a famous Carthaginian general. He decides to take troops all through Hispania. You remember Hispania is? All yeah. through Gaul. And right here in between Gaul and Italy is a big old mountain range, which on your map says... The Alps. The Alps. The Alps. Huge, high mountain range. So all of the soldiers, Hannibal was like, how are we going to get our soldiers over this huge mountain range? And do you know what he uses to get them over the mountains? Planes. No, planes are not invented. Elephants! Yes! Elephants! Hannibal! I wonder if I could draw an elephant. Hannibal gets huge elephants. <laughs> elephants and they march over the Alps with war elephants and all their soldiers are on their elephants. So they start coming down here. What do you think Rome does when they see all these elephants? Ha! Ha! Huh? No. They're scared. What? They're very scared. They're like, ah! Probably a lot of them have never even seen an elephant. And they're scared and they fall back like this. Carthage keeps coming forward and eventually they try to get to Rome, but Romans defeat them. So Carthage loses. And right as they were trying, as Rome was trying to fight back, at, Romans were trying to fight back at Rome, Rome decides to do its own sneak attack. I guess what they did. They came to Carthage. They came to Carthage. And Carthage was not expecting it. They just sent all their troops to go over the Alps. And so this is how, let me, let me erase this so you can see the next map. This is how Rome conquered Carthage. Here's a good picture. I should have shown this earlier. Here's Car the Carthaginians. They come here, they go over the Alps. They see all the circles here. That's them fighting in Rome. They fight, 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 fight. And Romans defeat them and then sneaky, sneaky, sneaky defeat Carthage down here. And now Rome has all of this. Bum, ba -da -dum. Ba -da -dum. So this is an interesting part in history. We are still the Roman Republic right now. We're in the Roman Republic. But since we had a lot of wars happening, guess who was taking control? Was it the consuls in the Senate? Generals. It was the generals. And the generals were actually saying, hmm, I like all this power. This power is pretty cool. And one general in specific, his name was Caesar. Caesar Augustus. So, Caesar Augustus. not Caesar Augustus, not Caesar Augustus. This is Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar was an amazing general, and he loved being in power. And there's a long story here, but basically Julius Caesar tried to get all of the Romans to be excited about him, and then he tricked the Senate, and he announced himself a perpetual, perpetual dictator. Perpetual dictator? And that meant he got to rule Rome forever until he died. Yep. So he, um, hold on, let me see. Yes, yeah, so it switched to a dictatorship. Once he said, I'm the dictator, it no longer became a republic. What did it become? Yes, a... 
Empire. Empire. Let's not do that because you're distracted. So now there's emperor. Yes. So he is now, Julius Caesar, you could say, was the first emperor. On your cards, it says the first Roman prince. But he is the emperor. So Julius Caesar became becomes the emperor. Guess, guess how you think the Senate felt about that? Bad. Bad. They were like, uh, we want power too. So... On March 15th, which happens to be my birthday and Miss Bree's birthday, Julius Caesar went to the Senate, and the Senate killed him. They stabbed him a bunch of times, and Julius Caesar died. And then we have a confusing situation about who is going to lead now. And it became kind of two people's job to lead. A guy named Octavian and Mark Antony. Octavia? Octavian and Mark Antony. Well, Basically, Octavia Octavian said, said Mark, Octavia. you can take part of the empire and I'll take the other part. But he tricked Mark and ended up killing Mark. And so Octavian became the emperor and Octavian, his name, he changed his name. Do you know what it became? Well, Octavia. Caesar Augustus. Augustus. Now, Caesar Augustus was now the new emperor, okay? So he is now leading the empire. But he did a much smarter job than Julius Caesar. He was kind to the Senate, and he actually let the Senate have some power. He kind of pretended it was still a republic so that people didn't get mad at him, but he basically ruled it by himself. Caesar Augustus was a great emperor, a wonderful emperor, and he helped to establish a bunch of new um, uh, rules, reforms. Uh, we see a beautiful Roman road being built. We see aqueducts being built. Rome is flourishing. And the season where Rome, is, Rome flourishes is called the... Where there's peace. Pax Romana. Pax Romana, which means... Peace in Rome. So, Rome is happy. Rome is peaceful. Then, because Rome is Rome, a lot more unsettling things happen. Uh, Caesar Augustus dies, and he died in 14 AD. Let me show you on our next map. He died in 14 AD. And is this, oh, this is Caesar's Civil War. Let's skip that one. Okay. Uh, he died, and we had a bunch of emperors happen between 14 A.D. and 286 A.D. So that's like Is it this map? 200 plus years. Yes. Now we're on the Roman Empire map. It's been 200 plus years that Rome is flourishing and doing well, and... There's a bunch of emperors that happen. Uh, one of the emperors' name is Nero, and he kick-started the persecution against the Christians. He didn't like the Christians. He blamed a fire on Rome on the Christians, and so we see the persecution of Christians, heavily persecution of Christians. Can you scoop? And um, that leads into <clears throat> kind of the end of uh, Israel being... Um, like Jews being uh, welcomed in Israel and or in Rome. One of the last emperors of Rome, his name was Diocletian. Okay, and this is, we're now in 286 AD. Diocletian divides the Roman Empire. That's exactly what Diocletian did. He realized this was too big of a space to rule with one person. So, Diocletian said that the West Empire was going to be ruled by a guy named Maximian, and Diocletian would rule the Eastern. So here's the Eastern, here's the Western. Oh, I'm sorry, we are not in the room. We are in the Eastern and Western Roman Empire maps. So if you want to, you can color each of them a different color and label this one Diocletian and this one Maximian. They both did many reforms. Diocletian did many, many reforms and helped to establish Rome to stay afloat for a long time until 401 AD. Dun, dun, dun. This is when 
we have a bunch of Germanic barbarians come in and attack the West. So let's look at a map that talks about the invasions. Mommy, they're the same. Here's our last map. This one shows the... So, on your map, if you want to draw with me, we're going to show the invaders. We'll start with the Visigoths. Visigoths were over here in kind of where Russia is now, and they invaded here because the Huns, which was another kind of barbaric group, were, um, oh, we're on kicking them map? out. No, we're on the same map. But we're showing the, um, the Visigoths eventually came into Greece, into the Eastern Roman Empire, where Diocletian was... was um, Diocletian was Yes, ruled. so it's kind of near that city of Thessalonica. So you can kind of draw an arrow. Here's the Visigoths of V. They actually lived there with the Romans pretty peacefully for a while, but eventually, just like most groups of people that live together, they end up having differences, don't like each other, and then start a war. So these Visigoths went and tried to conquer Eastern, um, the Eastern Empire, Eastern Roman Empire in Greece. Then they traveled into the Western Roman Empire and attacked Rome. They attacked Gaul and they attacked Hispania. Gaul is France, remember? And Hispania is Spain. So here's the um, path of the Visigoths. Uh, then we have uh, the, hold on, I'm going to move this because I can't really see. Uh, the Huns. Let's do, I don't know if I can do black. I'll do green, maybe green because I, I don't have a black. So here's the Huns. They come all the way over here. They also attack the West. Then we've got another group called the Vandals, and they come all this way, and they attack the West and Carthage. So Rome loses almost its entire Western Roman Empire right here. See all that right here? It has all been attacked by these Germanic barbarians. And so the West, technically we say the West fell in 406 AD. And that is the Rise and the Fall of Rome. Thanks for listening with Miss Allie, Lincoln, Lucy, and Anderson. Mr. Anderson.